Hello, my name is Kathy Miller and I'm going to give you a coding tip on the documentation requirements that are needed for procedures and diagnostic services. So one of the issues that we see when our practice, our facilities get pulled for review is that they're looking specifically at medical necessity and the documentation requirements that are contained in the medical record or lack thereof. So I'm going to talk about what is a required um, what is required on every visit, what is required on every procedure, as well as a diagnostic study. This is pretty well across the board. There has to be the patient's name, medical record number, date of birth, anything that it identifies them, and it has to be on every single record that's contained in their medical record. If that is missing, it is actually considered a not a legal document. So please make sure that all pages, anything that's scanned in your medical record, usually if this is an electronic medical record, that information is contained on every page that's in the record. But whenever you're scanning something in, make sure that information is contained. All right, so after we get the demographics in there, the next most important area is the date of service. The date of service has to be documented on every single report. We're talking visit, we're talking procedure note. Again, if you have an electronic medical record, usually that data service is on the top of it, are contained very easily for anybody that's doing a review to see. Well, we are still dealing with some, and it seems like this is more of a hospital issue, where some hospitals are still using transcription, and so when your physicians pick up the dictaphone, they often will say what the date of service is, but for some reason, that does not get on the actual note. And this can be for ERCPs, and it can be on consultations, etc. Remember that the date of service is not the date that's at the bottom of the report, which indicates that's the date the physician entered that information into the medical record. That just means that's when they did their dictation, that's when they did their transcription, that's whenever they did their entry. That does not mean that's the date they saw their patient. So the date that they saw the patient has to be clear. Without that, it's considered a false claim. So anybody that's reviewing records, if you see that's missing, your physician should be notified, your provider should be notified, and that be corrected before you submit a claim. The indications for diagnostic studies or procedures need to be clear not just screening for, rule out such and such. What are we looking at? So one of the most common things that we see is screening for varices, right? If you're screening for varices, that means the patient has some type of liver condition, all right? So make sure that you put that cirrhosis, cholangitis, portal hypertension, et cetera, screening for varices, because oftentimes during that EGD, you don't find anything. So there is no diagnosis code that says screening for varices. You also have to have findings on every report and recommendations, and then you have to have the date that it was signed and performed. All right, now that is also the same requirements that are needed on any diagnostic studies as well. All right, but for diagnostic studies, there's a different date component that needs to be documented. There always is a date uh, the service was provided that could be considered the date of swallow, it can be done the date of insertion, etc. But then there also has, should be, and I shouldn't say has to be, but there should be a date of download indicating the patient did come back if the service is not provided on the same date. So if the patient takes the device home, whether it be a prolonged pH study, impedance test, capsule study, etc., bravo, if they take it home, they come back on a different date the date of download should be documented. And then when the physician does the interpretation and signs off on the note, there should be definitely another date to support the date of interpretation. Those are requirements that need to be documented and should be on every report. If those are not seen, then there needs to be something done within your practice. In an electronic med medical record system, oftentimes we see records that are scanned in to those reports. If you scan something in, you have the ability to add those dates and you have the ability to add that signature on it and scan it in. Sometimes we're dealing with diagnostic studies that are on, on separate computerized systems and often they don't have the ability to add those different dates on. That means you need to do it. All right, so please make sure that you have all of those components met. On for pathology, again, same information on demographics. You still have to meet, have your indications, your history, your findings, your recommendations, but 
the dates that you need on this are the date the specimen was obtained, the date it was received in the lab, and the date it was reviewed in date of interpretation and signature. All right, these are definitely documentation and requirements that are met. Your coders, your physicians, your billers need to be aware that these are requirements in the medical record and if these are missing, that these need to be corrected before any bill or charge is submitted. Thank you and hope you have a great day and hope this tip helps your practice.